respected teachers and my dear friends a very good morning and hearty namaste to all of you on behalf of department of pharmacology jawaharlal nehru medical college and jawaharlal nehru medical college savangi mege vardha i welcome you all to today's cme on new vistas in pharmacology in this we will be dealing with mainly three topics chrono pharmacology it will be followed by geriatric pharmacology and then pharmaco genomics before going on to the subject as such let me introduce myself i am swanand i am professor and head department of pharmacology jnmc savangi and i will be dealing with the first topic that is the basic concepts on chrono pharmacology i will be dealing only with the basic concepts of this particular chapter of chrono pharmacology because the chapter itself is so vast that even the cmes or the workshops can be conducted on the chapter itself and with the time frame that we are having it will be possible only to deal with the basic concepts or sensitize regarding this chrono pharmacology now coming to this particular word chrono pharmacology let us concentrate on this particular word and this word has a prefix chrono attached to it chrono stands for chronology that is the arrangement of events according to the time of occurrence so that is what we call as chronology and when these events they occur after a regular time interval what we get is a rhythm nowadays we are having our t20 cricket world cup in india and this particular event occurs every 2 years so there is a rhythm by annual rhythm of occurrence of this particular events like this event there are certain events which occur chronologically or in rhythm in the biology and such a field we called it as chronobiology so what is chronobiology chronobiology is a, is a science dealing with the phenomena of rhythmicity in living organisms as we have rhythmicity in some of the things which which are there in the society so as we have the rhythmicity in the living organisms and that we call it as the chronobiology now in medicine in the modern medicine there are mainly three disciplines that take into account the influence of time namely chronophysiology chronopathology and chronopharmacology obviously today we will be dealing with this chronopharmacology which is the third part now how will we define the chronopharmacology if we see the books and see various definitions of chronopharmacology this is what we get as a definition of chronopharmacology let us try to see the definition though the definition occur appears long we will try to shorten it uh, in later of the slides this is how the definition goes it is the study of rhythmic predictable in time differences in the effects and or pharmacokinetics of the drugs both in experimental animals and in men it investigates the effects or side effects of a drug upon temporal changes in biological functions or the symptoms of a disease as well as a drug effects as a function of biological timing just by seeing to this particular definition the definition may appear complicated and we may not gather much things of this definition so let us try to simplify it what is chronopharmacology it is a investigative science first of all it is an investigative science concerned with biological rhythm we have already seen what exactly is a biological rhythm what is the concept of rhythm and dependencies of medications now dependencies on medications on this biological rhythm it is called as the chrono pharmacology this is the simplest of definition now this chrono pharmacology can be subdivided into four types chrono pharmacokinetics chrono toxicology chronesthesy and chronotherapy let us see it one by one chrono stands for some rhythm and the biological clock the concept of which we will further see in the latter of our slides chrono pharmacokinetics we know pharmacokinetics is what the body does to the drug there is absorption distribution metabolism and excretion and how the chronological events in the body that affects this pharmacokinetics we study under chrono pharmacokinetics then there is chrono toxicity toxicities of the drugs are also chronologically dependent that we will see later chronesthesy chronesthesy is a branch of chrono pharmacology which deals with dosing schedule of the drugs according to the biological clock according to the biological rhythm and lastly chronotherapy it is a broader concept that is a whole therapy of a particular disease 
depending on the chronological sequence of that disease or the rhythm biological rhythm that is being followed by that particular disease now coming to the this particular word biological rhythm which we are like saying again and again this biological rhythm or biological clock let us try to simplify it and let us try to understand it better some events occurring in the body of the living being over a particular time interval so let us take an example other than the human system that is suppose take the example of flowers these are the beautiful flowers of the night queen or the night lily which will blossom only at night so it will not blossom in the morning or the day time it will blossom only at night and it will emit a very sweet fragrance similar the fruits nowadays it is summer here in india and these are this is the season for mangoes and mangoes will appear on the trees only during the summers not in the winters and this experiment was carried out that the mango tree was kept in a very controlled atmosphere giving it the temperature similar to that of summers and it was seen whether it will grow mangoes for the whole year but it doesn't happen it will have the mangoes only during the summer seasons because there is a biological clock already set in inside that particular mango tree similarly in the human body we do sleep at night and this is a biological clock already set up inside our body and the experiments were done in this also that the a human being is kept in a very controlled atmosphere in a particular room where the person is not knowing what is there outside whether it is night or day and the person sleeps only at that time when there is night outside and so there is a biological clock already set in so many times we have the jet lags when we move on from one country to other where there is a difference of more than 12 hours or so so this is the biological rhythm or biological clock which is already there in the body there is one saying by saint kabir he was a very big saint in india what he said in his own words dheere dheere re mana dheere sab kuch hoy mali si che sho bada rut aaye phal hoy what this means is be patient o my mind everything happens at its own time if you add gallons of water to a tree the tree will bear the fruits only when the season comes and what unknowingly saint kabir is talking about here is the biological rhythm or the biological clock which is there inside every of the living being so whole the biological clock or the whole system is like an orchestra there are biological various biological rhythms going on in our body of different organs they are vibrating at the different biological rhythms and ultimately when they come together a sweet type of a melodious type of a tune of life comes out or emerges out of those biological clocks there are different types of biological rhythms now slowly slowly we are moving ahead into the core of this subject of chronopharmacology biological rhythms there are mainly three types of biological rhythms we will see the three types are short periods medium periods and long periods now in the short periods the period of rhythm is in seconds for example let us give a very basic example that is in the high frequency oscillations of electrocardiogram or electroencephalogram we will see that each of the wave keeps on appearing after certain period after certain seconds and this is inherent biological clock in the encephalogram in the medium periods we have a period of 30 minutes to 20 hours we call it ultra dyne that is self sleep staging pulsatile hormone secretions all the hormones are secreted in a pulsatile manner and that is what we call as ultra dyne perhaps this is the most important 20 to 28 hours this is called as circadian rhythm and this will come across again and again during the uh, this particular discussion on chronopharmacology it is in most biological functions what are these that we will see in the coming uh, of the slides in the longer period we have week we call it circaseptron like work rest routine and month we have circa mensual and the very important example of this particular thing is a menstrual cycle which occurs in monthly so it has a monthly rhythm and it has to go like that or if it is disturbed we call it as pathological or in the year we call it as circadian but what is the most important thing we saw it is the circadian rhythm which will help us in the therapeutics so let us take an example basic and the most simple example we are taking that is of the blood pressure rhythm let us see how the rhythm of the blood pressure is there in our body 
generally we say that the normal blood pressure is 120 by 80 but it doesn't remain 120 by 80 throughout the day or night this is how it shifts that is during the night say from 12 o'clock onwards till, till 2, p, 2 a.m it goes on increasing it is very less then goes on increasing up to 8 a.m then there is a bit of a decrease then after 2 p.m it again goes on increasing up to 8 p.m and after 8 p.m it again goes on decreasing up to about the 2 a.m so this is how this particular wave or the blood pressure rhythm goes inside the body now this is perhaps the most important slide in today's presentation peak time functions as we have seen that blood pressure peaks at certain hours and goes down at certain hours similarly there are functions which occur at peak at a certain hours let us see one by one now during the sleep that is from midnight to about 6 am these are the functions which go on in the body arterial nitriuretic peptide synthesis growth hormone synthesis lymphocytes ths synthesis prolactin eosinophils function uh, uh, melatonin function acth fsh and lh secretions they go on from midnight to 6 am and now from 6 am to noon when we are a bit awake right what happens there is a release of cortisol catecholamine blood pressure tends to go up a bit then plasma renin activity there blood viscosity increases then at the time from noon to 6 pm when we are most active there is synthesis of hemoglobin the airway potency is more here and the insulin secretion occurs and when we are retiring that is from same 6 pm to about midnight what happens there is cholesterol synthesis there is diuresis peripheral blood flow in the forearms is more gastric acid secretion it is more during after near to the midnight and uh, calcitonin gene related peptide the action is more during the midnight wbc actions is more or the synthesis is more during the midnight as we have peak times for various uh, parameters in the body we have the disease rhythm also which varies according to the time of the day let us see from 6 pm suppose we have this particular disease of perforated peptic ulcer the cases are more seen near 6 pm and again the pain of osteoarthritis is more during the 6 pm stomach acid secretion is more as we approach the midnight stroke due to the hemorrhage is more towards the midnight ulcer crisis just after the midnight asthma crisis as you can see are most common during 3 am there is rapid rise of blood pressure and angina attacks more during the 6 am so if you see this is proved beyond doubt that most of the angina patients they get admitted to the hospitals in the early hours that is 6 to 7 am then pain in the rheumatoid arthritis more in the morning that is being experienced by the people suffering from rheumatoid arthritis nasal symptoms and allergy during the 6 am or so and the stroke duty clot formation is more towards the noon that is 12, 12 o'clock in the afternoon and overall east time is from noon to 6 pm what are the implications of this implications to know that what is the rhythm implications to know how the disease behave during the whole day what are these implications the advantages are the time of administration of the drugs now using this we can judge that which time we have to chronesthesy that we have seen which time the drug has to be administered so we are moving to now we have come to the core of this particular topic that is the chronopharmacology and the applied chronopharmacology how we will apply all this knowledge for the therapeutics and for the chronopharmacology so applied chronopharmacology let us see system wise let us first take the endocrine system let us take a scenario corticosteroids we say that once daily morning dose of corticosteroids minimizes the risk of adrenal separation and other side effects. And generally we administered the cortisol or corticosteroids in the morning hour that is generally 8 am or so. What is the reason for this? Let us see this particular thing. As we can see here, see this very carefully that here the adrenocorticotropic hormone is released towards the morning. Now, what is the function of adenocorticotropic hormone? It will act on adenocorticotropic hormone, will act on the adrenal cortex to release the cortisol. So, this is what happens. This graph shows that during 6 am or so, there is a peak of cortisol in the body. And when there is a peak of cortisol in the body, there is 
the negative feedback mechanism and due to the negative feedback mechanism you can see towards 8 am or so this level of the cortisol this green shows the level of the cortisol normally in the body goes down so when you want to administer the drug administer the drug here so that what will happen the level of the cortisol in the body at any time will not go beyond the physiological levels it will not go beyond the physiological levels suppose you administer the drug here somewhere then it will go beyond the physiological levels and if it goes beyond the physiological levels then what will happen there will be so much of negative feedback that there is adrenal corticotropic atrophy that will be occurring and that's why we give so chronopharmacology tells us that when to administer the cortisol or the corticosteroids so these are given see at around 8 am we give where the cortisol levels in the body are going on decreasing do we give the corticosteroids only in the early in the morning there is one indication where we give in the case of adrenal hypoplasia bedtime corticosteroids are given because when we give the bedtime corticosteroids we know for a bit a period of time it will go high but due to the negative feedback mechanism again the release of the cortisol from the body will decrease and this particular thing is utilized more in the case of congenital adrenal hyperplasia continuing with the endocrine system in the case of addison's disease addison's disease as we know there is hypofunction of the uh, adrenal cortex or adrenal gland and what happens we want to give the cortic steroids but how we have to give them according to the diurnal variations which are there of the catalytic steroids so what we do asymmetrical morning high and late afternoon low doses of cortic steroids substitution best correct the fatigue and abnormal circadian time structure because we are giving we are administering the cortic steroids according to the biological rhythm in the case of this addison's disease so studying of this circadian rhythm so studying of the rhythms in the body helps us to increase the effectiveness of our therapy so there are two phenomena important phenomena that occur in the case of diabetics who are on the insulin one is dawn phenomena and other is the somogvi effect let us see what this phenomena is one is the dawn phenomena in both the phenomena there is increase in the blood pressure or increase in the blood sugar early in the morning how this particular thing this particular graph shows there is dawn phenomena there is increase in the blood sugar early in the morning why this thing happens in the case of dawn phenomena it occurs because there is a less of insulin in the body because there is less of insulin in the body at night about 3 am this blood sugar goes on rising because of the influence of growth hormone and cortisol we have said that growth hormone and cortisol are more after the 3 am and so after 3 am the under the influence of these hormones the blood sugar goes on rising and it becomes high early in the morning so there is a high increase in the blood sugar at night what is the treatment you have to use enough dose of insulin because somewhere the dose of insulin is not enough so you have to use enough dose of insulin you have to give the insulin in the longer acting insulin and reduce the bedtime snack so the, if the person is taking blood time snack ask the person not to take it now coming to the next somogvi phenomena in both the phenomena dawn phenomena and somogvi phenomena what happens there is increase in the early morning blood sugar but somogvi phenomena you can see at 3 am instead of there is rise there is fall in the blood sugar level why this occurs because there is too much of insulin or too much of long and acting insulin is being given so blood sugar drops at night at about 3 am and then starts rising due to the negative feedback or hormones that released which rise the blood sugar levels so in the morning there is increase in the blood sugar levels so if you want to judge whether the person is suffering from the somogvi phenomena or dawn phenomena we have to do the blood sugar estimation at 3 o'clock in the early morning so what is the treatment for somogvi phenomena exactly opposite as of dawn phenomena decrease the pre supper decrease the pre supper and intermediate insulin and change or start pre bed snack in the case of dawn phenomena we have said that don't give the pre bed snack and now here we have to give the pre bed snack so this is how knowing the rhythmicity in the body knowing the rhythmicity of the blood glucose levels in the body helps us to optimize the therapy for diabetes continuing with the endocrine system there is one more thing use of adh anti diuretic hormone 
we generally use this in the case of the children who has the bed wetting phenomena nocturia in the adults or ch children who are continuously bed wetting after even after certain age group so when it is to be given bedtime adh analog dosing must be given to decrease the bed wetting in children and nocturia in adults so it should be given at the bedtime and not in the morning or so let us change the over from endocrine system to cvs myocardial infarction one of the important very important significant diseases in cardiovascular system acute cardiac arrest transient myocardial ischemia onset is seen early in the morning early in the morning about 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock the patients with myocardial infarctions more number of patients with myocardial infarction get admitted to the hospitals why this is so so the reason why because there is a release of catecholamines there is a release of cortisol increase in the platelet aggregation vascular tone and heart rate surge early in the morning and all this leads to the precipitation of myocardial infarction let us see how in the morning hours what happens increase in the plasma norepinephrine cortisol and renin activity then there is increased sympathetic tone then there is increased platelet aggregability and decreased fibrinolytic activity and all this leads to the uh, precipitation of myocardial infarction so what is applied chronopharmacology for that in the case of cvs so what is our objective is to deliver the drug in high concentrations during the great need and where is the great need the great need is during the morning hours so all these drugs let it be ac inhibitors nifedipine amlodipine all these drugs are administered at night so if you administered these drugs at night the peak levels of the drugs will be reached only during the morning where the body has more tendency of getting precipitated into myocardial infarction and this will help us more further the first chronotherapeutic therapy for hypertension and angina pectoris was found out in the form of verapamil how it is the drug delivery matches the circadian pattern of blood pressure we have already seen what is the circadian pattern of blood pressure how the waves of the blood pressure are there in the body throughout the day and accordingly we will administer the verapamil further now coming to very important thing as what chronopharmacology has given us it has made a paradigm shift in the dosing of one of the very frequently used drug that is hmg coa reductase inhibitors we know hmg 3 hydroxy 3 methyl glutaryl coenzyme a and these are hypolipidemic drugs are used very commonly as hypolipidemic drugs what was there in the beginning when they were introduced in the market what was said the morning doses was recommended it was recommended that if you want to decrease the lipid levels in the body take this 3 hmg coa reductase inhibitors in the morning but when we studied chronopharmacology what we came to know that cholesterol synthesis is maximum during 6 pm onwards and where we are recommended to take these drugs early in the morning so by the time there is increase in the cholesterol in the body the levels of the drugs in the body are decreased so there is paradigm shift after knowing this chronopharmacological aspect now what we say this strategy was reevaluated after the discovery of the circadian rhythm of cholesterol biosynthesis in which higher rates of cholesterol intake and hepatic cholesterogenesis occur during the evening hours and even in the fasting state this is very important and so except atorvastatin all the statins simvastatin and all reduced inhibitors which is hmg coa reductase inhibitors are administered between the evening meals and the sleep why atorvastatin is not because atorvastatin has a long half life so its duration of action is long so even if you take in the morning the duration of the action remains for around 24 hours so except for atorvastatin all other drugs which were previously said that we should be given in the morning now we say after knowing the chronopharmacology that this should be given during the meals and the evening meals and the sleep going further in cvs bed time and not the morning aspirin dosing is best for preventing the pregnancy induced hypertension and preeclampsia that is also scientifically proved now coming to the respiratory system so we have seen endocrine system we have seen cardiovascular system now coming to the respiratory system asthma is one of the very commonest disease i have taken only the commonest disease just to sensitize you regarding the chronopharmacology since the topic deals with only basic aspects of chronopharmacology asthma is the most common disease with the largest circadian variation 
How this is? Because asthma is such a striking circadian variation, several types of chronotherapy has been tried in asthma. Let us first see what is the circadian variations. Now, in the case of asthma or in the case of any of the things related to the respiratory system like sneezing, nasal congestion, rhinorrhea, nasal pruritus, the peak occurs early in the morning. That is 6 o'clock. Can you see the peak is appearing early in the morning for all this sneezing, nasal congestion, rhinorrhea and nasal pruritus. The asthma is not different from this. You can see the cases of asthma, the number of cases of asthma encountered most at about 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock. After that, they go on decreasing. So, the day and night pattern, the asthmatic attacks are precipitated or status asthmatic is precipitated more during 6 o'clock early in the morning or 7 o'clock. So, what is done? <coughs> to prevent this, what is done is a single daily dose of inhaled corticosteroids. We all know that inhaled corticosteroids and budesonide, these are used for the treatment of the bronchial asthma are when administered at 5.30 p.m. Why 5.30 p.m.? Because during that hour from, <coughs> from 3 o'clock onwards to up to 6 o'clock in the evening, there is lots of activity that we are doing. And because of this, we are getting exposed to the allergens and other things. So when administered at 5.30 p.m. rather than 8 a.m. was nearly as effective as 4 doses a day. So if you administer this corticosteroids at 5.30 p.m., that you may not need 4 doses a day when you are doing like this. Oral prednisolone has been shown to be much effective in improving several features in the nocturnal asthma and had response to the standard dose of inhaled bitter to agonist when administered at about 3 pm rather than 8 am. So the take home message is, if you want to treat the asthma successfully, try to administer the drug towards the evening because the tendency of body of landing into the asthma is more in the morning. So by the time the drug reaches peak in the body, the body has the tendency of causing the uh, asthmatic attack and so that particular tendency of the body is suppressed. So this is what chronopharmacology gives us of the administration of the drug. Now there is a breakthrough that is in the form of Theo24, use of time release formulation of theophylline, achieved a therapeutic drug concentration during the night and avoided toxic levels during the day. So, we, during the day, we hardly want it. We want it towards the evening, towards the night. And so, there is one Theo24, which is there. It is a theophylline, which is, uh, which is time-released formulation. So, it will decrease the toxicity because we have seen theophylline is one of the very toxic drugs with the pharmacologist. So, it decreases the toxicity and increases its effectiveness. Now, coming to the autoimmune disease, we have seen the endocrine things, we have seen the CVS, we have seen the RS, and now coming to the autoimmune diseases. We know arthritis, one of the autoimmune diseases which is the, in which cyclooxygenase 2 inhibitors, silicoxib, recococib, these are the drugs which are very effectively used for osteoarthritis. Symptoms when taken in the evening, better results are obtained the rheumatoid arthritis when the part of the dose is taken in the morning. Why rheumatoid arthritis in the morning? See this particular thing, disease rhythm. When we see the disease rhythm, rheumatoid arthritis pain. See, the pain of rheumatoid arthritis occurs more during the morning hours, during 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. We see that rheumatoid arthritis people complain of more stiffness of the joint, main, more pain in the joint during the morning hours. So, one of the doses should always be in the morning if you want to take it for rheumatoid arthritis. And converse, if you want to take it for osteoarthritis, then your dosing schedule should be at about 6 p.m. at around 6 p.m. during the evening because most of the ortho osteoarthritis pains, they occurs more during the evening. So, this is how by knowing the chronopharmacology, by knowing the rhythm of the diseases occurring in the body, we can adjust the dose and the timing of the dose. Now, coming to the gastrointestinal system. One of the most commonest diseases that encountered in the gastrointestinal system is that of ulcerations, is that of increasing the gastric acidity. And commonest drugs that are used are H2 antagonists, that is histamine 2 receptor antagonists, uh, such as ranitidine, simitidine, famotidine, etc. In the past, when they were introduced in the market, when they administered, what they said, that it has to be administered at regular intervals, round the clock. 
on the basis of pharmacokinetic properties they said that round the clock we want this particular thing they had to be administered four times a day even some six times a day or something like that when they were administered but later on as we came to know regarding the chronopharmacological aspects what we came to know where is the gastric acid secretion maximum it is maximum towards the midnight right so if you want to suppress that particular maximum gastric acid secretion which is the culprit for causing the gastric ulceration we have to give the drug somewhere here so that it will act more during when the gastric acid secretion is maximum in the body so what we know now maximal acid secretion peptic ulcer disease pain and perforation of gastric acid and duodenal ulcers are more common at night so administration of these drugs at bed time is more effective so the most effective thing is when it is administered at the bed time and not round the clock because using the round the clock again what we it will do it will increase the toxic effects also we want to at the time reduce the toxic effects and increase the efficacy of these drugs so nocturnal administration not only reduces acid secretion more effectively but also promotes ulcer healing and reduces ulcer recurrence and this is proved beyond doubt that's why it is said that whenever you want to treat the gastric ulcer ulcers this should dosing schedule of these drugs should be there towards the night now coming to cns we have almost touched all the aspects we have almost touched all the systems and we have seen what is the importance of knowing the chronopharmacology in these systems coming to the cns chlorpromazine should be most effective in producing the sedative and antipsychotic effects when administered at midnight and immediately after rising at respectively so this particular thing chlorpromazine should be administered near to the midnight to provide the highest effect for haloperidol administration in the evening should be best for obtaining either sedative or antipsychotic effect so haloperidol should be administered in the evening so all these things by knowing the biological rhythm in the body we come to know that what type of drug is should be given at which time of the day to increase the efficacy so we have seen number of common diseases we have seen the diseases of C, uh, of the endocrine system diseases of cvs diseases of rs diseases of immunological immune system we have seen the diseases of cns some of the diseases we have uh, touched about the cns and we have seen that how chronopharmacology has helped us in timing the administration of the drug so what is there we want to time the administration of the drug but this is not all we have to get certain more thing out of knowing the chronopharmacology why itself is the disease occurring why we want to take this particular drugs during the time that is being required or according to biological rhythm there is somewhere the biological rhythm in the body is getting disturbed because our rhythm in the body nowadays there is stress and strain we have to work at the at odd hours and all and so biological rhythm is getting disturbed our biological rhythm many a times is not in the rhythm with the atmosphere it is not in the rhythm with the cosmic rhythm so what is important is to keep our body in such a way that it will always remain in the cosmic rhythm the more you remain in the cosmic rhythm the the more chances of being leading a healthy life so this is the take home message obviously the take home message is also this that you will have to use the drugs at a proper time to increase its efficacy and decrease its toxicity but this is the message that should be given that please do your bodies be always be vibrating pulsating with the cosmic rhythm so as to lead the healthy life so at the end i just want to acknowledge wikipedia and google which are nowadays like food and water for intellectual community further i want to acknowledge the concept of pharmacology by dr n udupa and lalmens atlas of pharmacology from which some of the slides i have taken so thank you very much and we will proceed on to the next presentation of geriatric pharmacology